Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone this morning. Just a few announcements. Uh, I'm sure everyone knows that Cliff Jacob passed away this past week. His funeral will be here at the church next Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, we will be doing it just like we do our regular services. Those that feel comfortable to come in are welcome to come in. We will also broadcast it for those that want to be there but don't feel comfortable to come in. You can sit out in your cars and listen to it. And obviously there will be no graveside service. Uh, we need to keep Alfred Rain now in our prayers. He has COVID. Also, please keep Jimmy Caskey in your prayers for healing. Uh, Joey says he's doing well on his recovery, but it's my understanding he has three more surgeries coming up, so it's a process with this problem that he has right now. So please keep him in your prayers. And at the same time, as I mentioned that, I'd like to mention that we do need a Sunday school teacher. We need a couple of Sunday school teachers, as a matter of fact. Uh, but as all of you know, Joy has just been a tremendous asset to our Sunday school. But because of Jimmy's surgeries and her having to take care of him, she's taking a sabbatical, if you will, a leave from teaching Sunday school. So uh, she'll be greatly missed. She's very energetic. And, uh, just a fabulous teacher and we need someone to please volunteer to step up and take her shoes. Also, <clears throat> this morning, I want to announce that due to the coronavirus, due to everything that's going on right now, we're going to limit communion to one Sunday a month. The first Sunday of the month, we will be doing communion. The third Sunday, uh, we, as a council, decided to post hone those uh, until after the coronavirus has passed us enough that we can all gather together and worship here inside the building. So, but we will still have communion on the first Sunday. And Johnny has asked me to mention, for those of you that are parked outside, uh, you're welcome to park on the east side in the shade tree, but when it's time for communion, if you like communion, We'd ask that you move to the west side of the building so everybody's together so Johnny doesn't have to run up. as far. Or just pull up, either way. Yeah, yeah. Johnny says, or just pull up uh, so he doesn't have to truck all the way out there underneath the trees and so forth. So we would appreciate your cooperation in that. Also, for those of you in parish heads, my understanding we have a parish ed meeting Wednesday night at 730. So we hope all those can attend. And if you're interested in helping us with the parish ed, if you're interested in being a teacher, please contact Lori uh, or Kathy. Uh, and of course, you would definitely be welcome to come to the meeting on Wednesday night. We'd love to have you. That's all the announcements I have this morning. Are there any announcements from the congregation? Hearing none, let us begin our service. <clears throat> in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, 
so that we may in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Now hear this good news. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all of our sins. As a call and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here the worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
The first reading for this Sunday is found is from the book of Isaiah, the 55th chapter. Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and he who has no money, come, buy, and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen diligently to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear that your soul may live, and I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Behold, I made a, him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. Behold, you shall call a nation that you do not know, and a nation that did not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and of the one of Israel, for he has glorified you. Here ends the reading. We will now read responsibly Psalm 136, beginning with verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of God, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of Lords, for his mercy endures forever. Who by wisdom made the heavens, for his mercy endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. For his mercy endures forever. Who created great lights, for his mercy endures forever. The sun to rule the day, for his mercy endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, for his mercy endures forever. Who remembered us in our lowest day, for his mercy endures forever. And delivered us from our enemies, for his mercy endures forever. Who gives food to all creatures, for his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven, for his mercy endures forever. The second reading is from the book of Romans, the ninth chapter. I am speaking the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience bears me witness in the Holy Spirit that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, my kinsmen according to the flesh. They are Israelites, and to them belong the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. To them belong the patriarchs, and from their race according to the flesh is the Christ, who is God over all, blessed forever. Amen. But it is not as though the word of God has failed. For not all, of, all who are descended from Israel belong to Israel. And not all are children of Abraham, because they are his offspring. But through Isaac shall your offspring be named. This means it is not the children of the flesh who are the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted as offspring. For this is what the promise said. About this time next year I will return, and Sarah shall have a son. And not only so, but also Rebekah, when Rebekah had conceived children by one man, our forefather Isaac, though they were not yet born and had done nothing either good or bad, in order that God's promise of election might continue, not because of works, but because of him who calls. She was told, the older will serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. Here ends the reading. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 13th chapter. When Jesus heard of John the Baptist's death, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, 
they followed him on foot from the town. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the village and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loads here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. And taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. You are seated. Why are we here today? A lot of people look at me wondering if I'm serious when I ask those questions. But we need to stop and think about it. Why are we here today? I mean, obviously we're here to worship and praise God, but let's think a little bit beyond that. We're all here because someone cared about us. Someone thought enough of us to share the good news of Christ with us. It might have been your parents, your grandparents, or other family member, or maybe just a casual acquaintance. But whoever it was, they had a heart for others. In our reading from Romans this morning, Paul said, I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. You see, Paul truly had a heart for others. In our society today, Paul has been accused of many things by the unbelievers in this country in an attempt to discredit the gospel. He's been accused of being a male chauvinist, a homophobic, an anti-Semitic, and the list goes on and on and on. Again, it's all from people trying to discredit the Bible. They're all godless attempts to try and undermine Scripture. But the truth of the matter is, Paul truly had a heart for others. Our reading today tells us that his heart bled for the Jews. And the reason for his sorrow and his anguish was that his own people, fellow Jews, fellow Israelites, had rejected Jesus of Nazareth as a savior of the world. And it caused Paul great pain. He was hardly able to find the words to express his feelings. He found it very difficult to consider what his fellow Israelites had given up. They were all so close, but yet so far. He talked about the gracious blessings that God had given to those special people. He said, theirs is the adoptions of sons. There's the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship and the promises. Theirs are the patriarchs, and from them is traced the human ancestry of Christ, who is God over all, forever praised. God reached out to the Israelites many, many times. And the scripture is plain that the Israelites, the Jewish people, were the chosen people of God. They had a special place in God's heart. <clears throat> God called Israel his son. God's own presence was cast 
upon the Jewish people. The glory of the Lord led the nation of Israel through the deserts, through the wilderness, through a pillar of fire and smoke. His presence filled the tabernacle in their temple. And we learn that this unique presence of God was in fact the Son of God, the second person of the Trinity in visible form. And all this was meant to encourage the people and lead them to trust their Savior, to trust the Son of God. God gave covenants to them. He made promises to them. He said, I will be your God. And no doubt that Paul had in mind the wonderful gospel covenant the Lord had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, promising that all the nations on earth would be blessed. A promise of a savior. There is no other nation stood before God as the Israelites did at the foot of Mount Sinai. They heard the very voice of God as he spoke his good and just commands to them. No other nation worshiped the way that Israel did at the time. In fact, they worshiped a living God in a building that he himself had designed. God gave them a detailed worship ritual. In other words, he gave them the liturgy. He laid it out as to how they were to do it. It included animal sacrifices as part of the Old Testament gospel promised them, pointed their attention to the future, to the sacrifice of the Lamb of God the Savior of all. The greatest privilege and blessing God had given was that they could trace human ancestry of Christ Jesus back to themselves, back to their own tribe. You know, God clearly had a heart for Israel. Yet after everything He had done for them, they got to hear him speak. He spoke to them. Yet they still rejected him. They chose to turn to their own logic and trust in their own righteousness. And Israel turned from God's grace and they turned to what they believed to be their own ability to save themselves. They devised a religious system for their own by which they could earn salvation on their own. They exchanged grace for greed. They turned on each other, judging and condemning each other, especially those who did not meet their man-made requirements. There was no longer any unity amongst them the kingdom was divided, and so were the people of Israel. They no longer had a heart for one another, but only for themselves. See, Paul loved his fellow Jews, his brothers, those of his own race, the people of Israel. Paul didn't mock them. He didn't ridicule them. He didn't hate them or condemn them nor did he encourage the Gentile Christians to do so. Instead, he said, for I wish that I myself were cursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my brothers, those of my own race, the people of Israel. More than anything, Paul had a love for the truth. Paul had been led to see Jesus as the promised Messiah. Paul said, who is God over all, forever praised, amen. The Holy Spirit had given Paul his faith in Christ. 
He gave it to him so he could reach out his hand and grab the rope of salvation that was offered to him. But notice he doesn't gloat over that fact. Instead, he wishes that if it was possible that God would cut the rope if it would bring Israel to God. He was willing to sacrifice himself. He was willing to be damned, forsaken, and condemned by God for others. That's how deeply Paul cared for others. Paul truly had a heart for Christ. He was willing to be condemned for the very people that were condemning him. It was because the love of Christ compelled him. He had a heart that was willing to give of itself for someone else. Only the word of truth can give us a heart for the truth. As Paul says, I speak the truth in, truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience confirms it in the Holy Spirit. Everything that Paul said was said under the direction of the Holy Spirit. The truth is that Jesus Christ has accomplished salvation for the world, for each and every one of us. But are we willing to reach out and accept it? You know, Jesus was born a Jew, a descendant of the patriarch, according to his human nature. But he was so much more. He was a promised Christ who is God over all, forever praised, as Paul said. And now Paul truly had a heart for this truth. He loved the message of the gospel, and he longed to share that message with all people. But most especially, he wanted to share it with his fellow Jews, and they turned against him. See, the truth of the matter is, God wants all of us to be saved. All of us. He wants Jews, Gentiles, Americans, Africans, Europeans, Russians, Palestinians, Israelis, all of them. All these people. He wants them all to be saved. And it takes people who have a heart for people to share this truth with others. But in order for us to share the gospel, we have to be rooted in the gospel. We need to be in the word of God, a people growing so we can share the word of God, a people going. We need to support our missionaries with our prayers and with our offerings. They're sharing God's heart, Christ's heart, in places that we can't go, but our hearts can go with them. Pray that God would also give you the opportunity and the words to share the truth of salvation with someone close to your heart, a friend, a family member, a neighbor. I used to tell people to share with everybody, your friends, enemies, neighbors, and relatives. Share it with all. Share it with all. If you pray and ask for the Holy Spirit to be with you, He'll answer all the questions that you have. He will sustain you through it all. He'll lead you to the means of grace, the gospel and the word and sacrament. And He'll fill your heart with love for others and a love of the truth. Now is the time. You know, with all the chaos and everything that's going on in the world today, the word, world needs to hear the message of Christ desperately. They need to hear more now than any other time in history. It's time to go out to a world that is lost without the love of Christ. Someone took the time 
to share the message with you. Somebody cared enough about you to lead you to the gospel of Christ, to the good news of Christ. Don't we owe it to them to do the same for others? Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the day that you've given us. We thank you, Father, for your word, for your son. For... We thank you, Father, for the Bible, for your word. Father, we just pray that you would strengthen and encourage everyone to strengthen Christians throughout this country to reach out and share the message with those that are lost. We pray, Father, that through the Holy Spirit we could share the word with those that are in so desperate need of hearing it. And through that good news, it could bring unity to our country. Father, we pray that you'd soften the heart of those who are against you, who have not heard your word, who have not accepted you. And we pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen.
as our faith through the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended again to hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at his right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. of the heavenly banquet that we will all share when Jesus returns. Send us forth, fed and nourished, ready to serve all in, night, in need, and invite others to the feast that is you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the rain that you have blessed us with in the past few weeks. We pray, Father, that you would continue to bless us and to give us the rain that we need when we need it to support our cattle, our livestock, and our crops. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayers. Father, you are the one true God, and you desire all people to know you and your love. Help all those who believe in you and follow Christ to share the good news of your salvation. Grant that missionaries would be able to spread the glorious word of your mercy and saving power to all those they meet. May their words bring relief and hope to those who hunger and thirst for your peace and salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Holy Father, we ask you to strengthen our faith and encourage growth in our spiritual lives, that we would come to know you better and trust you more deeply. As the summer season continues and steady growth is occurring in the fields and on farms, let our hearts be open to your word working within us that we would experience steady growth of faith in our lives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of grace, you adopted Israel as your chosen people and your love for them abides forever. Through Jesus, we have been grafted into your holy family. May your people everywhere receive the good news of Jesus Christ in ways that transform and ways that unite for we know that through christ there's neither jew nor gentile but only those whom you love and call by name lord in your mercy hear our prayers father we pray for all those who have the coronavirus and those who are suffering from fear and anxiety we lift them up father and ask that you would strengthen them and see them through this illness we also lift up all of our health care workers and especially pray for those working in nursing homes and supporting the elderly in missing their families. Give them strength and peace while they care for those in need. Lord, in your mercy. In your prayers. Father, we pray for our nation. Our country is in a time of confusion and chaos. And we ask that you would be with our country's leaders and that you would give them courage and wisdom to do what is right for our country. We pray for our president and ask that you would soften the hearts of all our politicians, that they would put aside their personal desires and do what is right for the country. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Father, we 
pray for the family of Cliff Jacob. Father, we'd ask that you would be with them in this time of mourning and grief. And we lift them up to you, Father, and ask that you would give them comfort and peace in knowing that he is at home with you. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. prayer. Father, we pray for all those suffering from illness, addiction, and pain. We pray for Alfred Rang now as he fights this coronavirus. We ask that you would strengthen him and bring him through this illness. We also continue to pray for Cole Lord and ask that you would heal him. We did pray, Father, that you lay your healing hands upon him and strengthen him and return him to normal. And Father, we continue.